Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Melissa Estevio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and owner of Biltmore Psychology and Counseling. Um, so earlier we made a video that was talking about how parents can identify distress in their children as we're going through social distancing and COVID-19 this year. Um, so once we've identified that potentially our child might be in distress, I wanted to give you guys some tools and tips about what to do to help your child not feel so distressed or overwhelmed. Um, so one of the first things that I think it's important for us to do is to recognize that kids can identify that they feel a certain way, but they don't always know how to put a name to it. So being able to label that for a child and say, you know, it looks to me like you're feeling really afraid right now. It looks to me like you're feeling really anxious about what's going on or, you know, I'm noticing that you're feeling really angry and I'm wondering if you're feeling really out of control. Um, for a lot of kids, you know, they can give you the feedback that that might not be accurate, but so often they just don't know exactly what they're, what they're experiencing and what's going on. And so being able to give them a word for that can be really empowering for them and help them feel understood. A second thing that we can do is help our child specifically identify what they're afraid of. So again, step one is being able to say, hey, it looks like you're really afraid. This looks like, a, you know, this is a really scary thing. Help me understand, what are you afraid of? Give them the space to be able to say, I'm afraid you're gonna get sick. I'm afraid I'm not gonna see my friends at school again. I'm afraid that I'm never gonna get to play outside with the neighbors, okay. Well, this is something that we can talk about, and this is something that we can address. Now, again, this is true for adults, and is also true, true for kids, is that it's easy for us to want to jump in to try to fix that problem or fix that, that feeling. The best thing that we can do as parents is just empathize with that. Hey, buddy, I get that. That makes sense. Um, I can see where this would be a really scary thing. If they are you know, concerned about safety, we can provide some reassurance. Hey, I'm here. I'm with you right now. Um, and that can be really powerful for kids to be able to identify exactly what they're feeling there. The third one um, is check in on your own anxiety. You know, kids really can feel the temperature of the room and the, the distress that we're feeling. And so if they're showing a lot more of these problematic kinds of symptoms, it's good for us to check in and say, am I feeling anxious? Am I emoting a lot of this um, tension and frustration? Because my kids are probably picking up on that and are acting out then as a result. And so if we are able to check in with ourselves and practice some good you know, um, grounding exercises and good mental health practices, we also might find that our kids do a little bit better as well. A fourth thing that we can do is create a routine that our children can anticipate and know that's coming. So for a lot of us, we're trying to figure it out, right? We didn't know if we were gonna be in shelter in place or in you know, social distancing for just a few days or for weeks. And so now we're looking at for sure month, maybe months. And so while this might be a lot to ask, I think it's important for us to find some kind of routine that our kids can start to identify as their new normal during this time and to know that that creates some predictability and some certainty in their life. So another one is we can provide them time every night to be able to talk about how they feel. And so, you know, maybe part of that routine is a bedtime routine where you tuck them into bed and then check in with them just for five minutes and say, hey, how are you feeling? What's going on? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling distressed? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling afraid? Again, be able to put those words out there for them that they can latch on to and say, yeah, that one and then have that space to be able to talk about that. Um, and the very last one is that we can help them with some kinds of grounding and calming exercises. So I love that at any age, it can be really good to help someone practice deep breathing. You know, I have a, a little toddler at home and she is the queen of being able to get distressed, take a deep breath, calm down, and then be able to feel a little bit better. And so, you know, no matter what the age of your child, this is something that they can really benefit from is learning how to emotionally regulate with deep breathing and grounding exercises. So, you know, I'm with all of you parents out there. We're figuring this out as we go. There is no perfect manual for how to deal with COVID-19 while you're in social isolation and don't know how long it's gonna go. So be kind to yourself as you're figuring it out. And most importantly, you know, kids just need to know that they're safe and that they are loved. And if we're providing that safe and loving environment, going to do all right. They're going to get through this and we're going to get through this too. So if you have any questions about that, as always, you can leave them in the comments below. You can subscribe for more content like this in the future. But in the meantime, stay safe. As we've been saying, stay healthy. Um, and we're thinking about you guys. Take care.